Setting a PR five o'clock in the morning is something I've never done. Uh, so coming into this session, all I was thinking about was noise. How do I make sure I don't drop a nuclear bomb five o'clock in the morning for my neighborhood? Um, so I thought about squatting in the in the power rack, um, and then I came in here. I had ideas about putting towels, several towels over the safety pins, uh, making sure that if I do fail, they kind of fa fall on a pillow essentially. Um, and then I came in here and I realized that the, the safety pins were too low for my squat. They kind of set up for the bench press. Uh, so then I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to have to adjust them or whatever. And these safety pins, because they're bent, they're really hard to get out of the uh, where they are right now. So that's a whole bunch of racket. Um, and then I went, screw it. Let me just go back to the squat stands like I, um, like I usually kind of squat nowadays. Um, and I'll just auto regulate the hell out of it. So if it feels really heavy, if I get to a rep that I'm not sure I'm gonna hit, cancel it, just rack it, and that's it. That's the end of the session. So I came in here and I was kind of well measured. Um, all I was thinking about was auto regulation. Um, I know today I wanted to come in and hit 190 for a bunch of sets. I was able to hit 190 for one set, and dare I say it was cleaner than the last time I hit 190 for a set of five. Um, that was a few days ago. And then I went in for a second set. I, I got two reps. Uh, the second rep I wasn't happy with. Um, it was kind of that wandering type of uh, technique to it. My body was kind of looking for power and kind of you know, <laughs> going back and forth, shifting the, the, the placement of the bar. Um, it was going a little bit forward again. I thought, okay, that's it, cancel it, and that was it. Um, but I don't remember ever coming into a 5 a.m. session with the mentality of setting a PR. Um, that's something that I've never done. Usually 5 a.m. sessions, as you guys know, you know, you don't feel the greatest, you know. Uh, I slept, when did I go to bed last night? Uh, around 10.30, 11 o'clock, uh, got up at 4.30, and here I am. Um, so no food, you know, still kind of waking up, if you will, as soon as I basically woke up, brushed my teeth, got ready and came in here. Um, and to think that the human body can then, you know, half an hour later have 190 kilos um, on his back and perform at a, at a really high standard, uh, to me, is still remarkable. Um, you know, these sessions, I always think to myself, you got to be careful, man, because we all know that we're kind of stiffer in the morning, the spine, the spinal cord. I don't know what causes this um, stiffness. Um, uh, I remember hearing people about you know, there's less water in discs or something like this. I, I can't remember, but like there's just, there's, there's, a, there's a water shift, there's a fluid shift around the body that happens while you sleep, while you're kind of supine and inactive. And when you wake up, I think that fascia, dehydration, all that sort of stuff plays an impact, uh, plays a role in you feeling stiff in the muscles. So if you get up and you try and reach for your toes in the morning, it's gonna be really, really worse than if you were to test it right before sleep. Um, so coming in on a, on a body like that and then trying to set a PR at five o'clock in the morning is it's not the greatest thing to do. So today, the fact that I was able to hit 190 for a set of five, um, I'm happy that there's progress there. Now, all of this stuff is very new to me. This idea of progressing basically every other session is, is, is this is craziness. Um, but I'm in this crazy little groove right now where I basically feel stronger and stronger every session. These fives that I'm doing, I don't know what the hell they're doing, but um, I'm feeling fantastic. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm still moving very heavy weight. Um, I'm putting lots and lots of volume in um, and my hips are feeling great. So I feel like I'm going you know, from one strong session to another strong session. So um, in the next few days, um, I'm gonna try and hit a second whole set and I'll just progress it like that. Um, it's just, it's one of those things. I, I don't know. I don't know. You guys were asking me, where, when am I going to set a new single PR? <sighs> to be honest with you, I, I, don't, I don't really know. Um, all, I, all I'm thinking right now is I want to milk the hell out of this, this period, um, push it as far as I can. If I get to a stage where the fives have kind of plateaued and I can't shift them anymore, I can't you know, progress through volume or intensity or anything like that, then it's probably a good idea to go to threes and then, and then singles or something like this. Um, but right now, I'll be silly to kind of move away from something that's just going so good, man. Like, it's just, I don't know. Um, it's just unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. To, to, to think that I've spent so long 
you know, in pain and now my squats are feeling incredible. Um, it's probably, there's a probably a lesson there. Um, I have been thinking about this in the back of my mind and the, the lesson is probably singles. Um, singles on a cooler body um, makes you hurt. Uh, when I say a cooler body, I mean, you know, if you don't, if you don't come in and you don't hit, I don't know, I want to say 30 repetitions uh, in the warm up or 40 repetitions or something like this. And then you basically sprint up. This is a term I used to use. Sprint up to a heavy single and then do volume after that. I don't think that's a, a good idea. Um, looking back at it now, I spent a large part of my squat every day journey doing that. So I would literally come in and I would hit the bar for 10, hit 60 for five, uh, 100 for one, 140 for one, 160 for one, and I would hit that notorious 180 for one. And I feel like 180 for one was you know, the standard diet for me for a very long time. Uh, and then I would often go back and, you know, do some volume, whether it be threes, fives, tens, twenties, or something like this. Um, I don't think that's a smart way of doing it I, because of the warm up. Um, you need to, like, if you're going to do a single, you, you better be freaking warmed up. You know, and I'm talking about all of the ligaments and the tendons involved in the hip girdle, that's kind of what's troubled me. And it makes sense why it's troubled me because I go ATG and I use the bounce, especially for those heavy singles, as you would like, you know, when you're using 90, 95% kind of your max. Um, and can you rely, you're relying on that tissue to produce force when it's not really 100% ready. So if you think about it, bar for five, 60 for five, uh, 100 for one, 140, 160, 180. We're talking like 15 reps, man. Not even that, right? And then all of a sudden you're you're, you're putting your body through that. So, I, you know, if, when I finally get to the one uh, rep, you know, singles, um, pushing the singles for, our, you know, max, I have to think really carefully about what I'm going to do. Um, these fives are really good because, you know, now I hit bar for, for, for 10, 60 for five, 100 for five, 140 for five, 160 for five, you know, so we're talking like, what's that, already 25, 30 reps. And then I hit fives, fives, fives. And just the, 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 the nature of the fives, it's kind of like lubricating. I spoke about this in, in a few videos ago. Um, there's, a, there's something about fives, like it's, it's heaps of tension because you're using 80, 85% kind of weight or 70 to whatever, whatever you're using, you're using quite heavy weight. Um, so you're getting a lot of tension through your system. But at the same time, it's giving you blood. It's giving you a bit of a pump. So you're kind of like doing both. For me, tension gets me strong, but tension alone in the form of singles also gets me hurt. So if I mix a bit of pump work, like I would with a 20 rep squat or 50, whatever, whatever body weight squats, I feel fantastic after those workouts. The blood, you know, blood is the life force of us, man. The blood gives us nutrition, gives us gets rid of waste products, it just makes you feel good. And tendons love that, right? Ligaments love movement. Movement is medicine, I've said this a thousand times. So if you kind of mix that up, and it feels like the fives are kind of like a perfect blend of that, especially if you're doing like three or four or five sets of five or seven sets of five or something like this. I usually walk out of those sessions feeling fantastic. But if I was to do, let's say, I don't know, 35 singles of one with 90, 95% weight, um, you maybe get a little bit of pump from that because you're doing a lot of volume. But man, that's a lot of tension, man. That's a lot of freaking disastrous tension. And so this is where I think I have gotten myself in a pickle in the past um, because I've done that. Too much tension, not enough blood. Uh, so when I finally get to the singles period in the next, whatever, few weeks or whatever the case might be, I'm going to think about, okay, how am I going to do this? Maybe you know, go to, I don't know, I want to say 70%, uh, and then maybe do like three sets of five there or something like this. Um, maybe that's too heavy. Something along those lines, three sets of five there, and then go, you know, 80% one, 90% one, and then, you know, uh, 100%, 102%, 105%, whatever the case might be for one, something like that. Because I feel like if you get a pump, if you get some sort of a cheap pump where, you know, you don't tax your nervous system, you don't tax your, your, your real strength reserves, but you still get a bit of a, a pump, then you feel like you, have, you can trust some of these structures in your body to kind of 
give you everything they got. But if you are kind of tentative through a one rep max, um, it's not a good thing, right? Because you want to explode, you want to feel poppy. And I've spoken about feeling poppy in the past. It's, the, it's this idea of just relying wholeheartedly on every piece of tissue in your body. And you get down to that hole and you like, pop, you just kind of like just jump out of that position. There's no, there's no doubting, there's no second guessing about it. Um, there's no pain, there's no discomfort, there's nothing. You just pop out of that ATG position. And that is that idea that I'm after, like feeling poppy. And I think the feeling poppy sensation is, you know, it might be different for everyone else, but you need some sort of a pump, not just any pump. You need some sort of structured idea of how you're going to warm up. So you feel the working sets are, are just popping off, basically. That's kind of how I look at it. Uh, quick turnaround from last night's video. Last night's video I uploaded at 10 o'clock. Um, so I'm you know, already making this video now. I'm you know, doing the voiceover now, but I'll upload it again tonight. Um, so as it stands right now, we're talking, what, six, seven hours after last night's video, and already that name popped up on Patreon. Tristan Gibson, appreciate you, man. Like, you know, I, I keep saying it. I, every single morning I wake up, there's a name, and there's a few names, and today there's one name, and it's just unbelievable, man. I'm getting ready to go to work now, and I'm like, I, I just, I feel like there's a wind in my sails, man. I feel like there's nothing like being supported. You know, I've spoken about yesterday about, you know, happy wife, happy life, all that stuff. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing better in life than when you feel supported. Um, and this whole squatter day journey would have never been possible if my wife was like, you know, this is not happening on my watch. The fact that she supports me and does everything that she does makes this possible. Um, in a similar way, all of your names on Patreon and all of the names that I see in the comments and all of the conversations that we have on the channel... It just feels like it's so much easier for me to continue because I have so much damn support. It's incredible, man. It's, it's always uplifting and I'm, I'm never going to kind of get used to this because this is not normal, man. It's not normal to wake up every morning and, and have so much positivity and encouragement. Um, so thank to all the names. Thanks to everyone that's kind of involved in this and, you know, thank Tristan uh, this morning for, for jumping on board. Um, I just feel blessed. Anyway, guys, I better get run out of here. I'm kind of running out of time. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.